The eight famous engines. The Fat Controller's Engines. One evening, Thomas brought his last train to the junction. He went for a drink. I'm going to the big station, he said to Percy and Toby. So are we, they answered. Do you know, Percy went on, I think something's up. Toby looked at the sky. Where? Down here, silly, laughed Thomas. How? asked Toby reasonably. Can something be up when it's down? Look, said Thomas excitedly. Look! Seven engines on the other railway were coming along the line. Hello, Gentis, whistled Percy. Hello, Pug. They're friends of mine, he explained. I don't know the others. Ginty and Pug whistled cheerfully as they puffed through the station. What is all this? asked Thomas. The fat controller's got a plan, answered his driver, and he's going to tell it to us. Come on. So they followed to the big station at the end of the line where all the engines had gone. The fat controller was waiting for them there. The people of England, he said, read about us in the books, but they do not think that we are real. Shame, squeaked Percy. The fat controller glared. Percy subsided. So, he continued, I am taking my engines to England to show them. Hooray, hooray, the engines whistled. The fat controller held his ears. Silence, he boomed. We start the day after tomorrow at 8 a.m. Meanwhile, as these engines have kindly come from the other railway to take your place, you will show them your work tomorrow. Next day, as Annie and Clarabelle were going to England too, Thomas and Genty practiced with some other coaches. Thomas was excited. He began boasting about his race with Bertie. I whooshed through the tunnel and stopped an inch from the buffers like this. Crash! The buffers broke. No one was hurt, but Thomas's front was badly bent. They telephoned the fat controller. I'll send up some men, he said, but if they can't mend Thomas in time, we'll go to England without him. Next morning, the engines waited at the junction. Toby and Percy were each on the truck, and Duck had pushed them into place behind Edward. Henrietta stood on the siding. The fat controller called her a curiosity. I wouldn't dream of leaving you behind, he said. I'll fit you up as my private coach. She felt very grand. Gordon, James, and Henry were in front. They whistled impatiently. The fat controller paced the platform. He looked at his watch. One minute more, he said, turning to the guard. Beep, 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 whistled Thomas and Panda into the station. Annie and Clarabelle twittered anxiously. We hope we're not late. It isn't quite eight. Thomas, said the fat controller sternly. I am most displeased with you. You nearly upset my arrangements. Thomas, abashed, arranged himself and the coaches behind Duck without saying a word. The fat controller climbed into Henrietta. The guard blew his whistle and waved his flag. The engines whistled, Look out, England, here we come! And the cavalcade puffed off. The engines stood side by side in a big airy shed. Hundreds of people came to see them and climbed in and out of their cabs every day. They liked it at first, but presently felt very bored and were glad when it was time to go. The people along their line put the flags out and cheered them home. We are glad to see you, they said. These others did their best, but they don't know our ways. Nothing else can compare with our fat controller's engines. And that's the end of the A Famous Engines book. Written by the Rev. W. Audrey and read aloud by me, Enrique Jr. Gomez. And make sure to comment, like, and subscribe on my YouTube channel.